Madrid, Venice in the case of Malcolm, Auckland, Seoul, Kuala Lumpur, Singapore, Manila, and Goshen. Thank you very much, all of you are jet lagged and still awake to, uh, to be at our final panel. Our panelists have highlighted how the Asia Pacific region is sharing its successes, failures, and learnings across public health, economic dynamism, talent circulation, and sustainable growth. I think these conversations show that none of these challenges exist in the world in a vacuum. They transcend. I also like to thank our media partners, Bloomberg and Commonwealth, for co-organizing this event with us, and especially Yi Shan Chen and Jennifer Curry for organizing the excellent and insightful panels. With that, it's my pleasure to introduce our lunchtime conversation. Placing resilience at the heart of society, where we bring current Premier, Premier Chen Jianren together with our Advisory Council Chair, Malcolm Turnbull, a former Prime Minister of Australia, here with you today. We invited Premier Chen to speak at our annual forum today because his experience bridges the world of science and the world of policy. Prime Minister Chen has a doctorate in epidemiology and human genetics from Johns Hopkins University, and he dedicated himself to genomic and epidemiological research for over 40 years. He's an academician and distinguished research fellow of the Genomics Research Center at Academia Sinica here in Taipei. He's one of the pioneers in research on predicting risk of end-stage liver disease in people with chronic hepatitis B. You'll probably find pamphlets of his face all over health centers in Taiwan. He knows about community health and national policy. In 2021, he was appointed as an academician to the Pontifical Academy of Sciences by the Pope. Premier Chen's health and scientific background informed his experience in government. He was Taiwan's Minister of Health during the SARS pandemic in 2003, and he was Vice President when COVID-19 broke out in 2020. As part of the Reform for Resilience Commission, he has been advising Capri on its founding throughout 2021 and always believed in resilience as the center's mission. Since he took office as the Prime Minister, he has also made resilience the center of his administration's mission. Premier Chen's speech this afternoon will be followed by comments by Malcolm Turnbull. Returning to the stage, if you were not here this morning, please go to our YouTube and listen to his amazing speech. His speech will close out our forum as chair of Capri's International Advisory Council. Almost all of our council members are here. Um, and we have had the honor of hosting Malcolm twice this year in today's forum here and in Charlottesville, Virginia last month, where he and his wife, Lucy Turnbull, the Lord, uh, Mayor of Sydney, joined Capri. Uh, council member Steve Ball, who's also here, in conversation at the University of Virginia. Malcolm has been supportive of Capri's mission of enhancing resilience and promoting innovative policy through interdisciplinary research since its beginning. Today's close conversation is a reunion of sorts for the three of us. Malcolm and I have known each other since 1997 when we were both, it's embarrassing to say, bankers. <laughs> and our families, including my husband, Harry Harding, have kept in touch personally and professionally with Malcolm and his family. As a political leader, he has focused on clean energy and resilience for Australia and the region, including saving the TPP, and creating the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. His biography, unfortunately, has not been translated into Chinese, partly because it is so thick, uh, but all of you can download it on Kindle to read his chapter about how to save the TPP. During the pandemic, we came together to create the Global Reform for Resilience Commission, which we founded in 2020, to make the COVID-19 pandemic a catalyst for reform. Not a challenge, but an opportunity to improve resilience across health, economy, and environment. And along commissions, along the way, commission's co-chairs, Jose Manuel Barroso, chair of Gavi, and former president of the European Commission, who is also on our council, who unfortunately cannot be here today. Uh, we together invited Prime Minister CJ Chen to join the commission. 
At that time, Professor Chen had returned to research full-time at Academic Sinica. Throughout the following year, our little team in Taipei here, including our supporters, early donors, made plans to establish an independent, non-governmental organization. Professor Chen supported and advised us until he re-entered politics at the end of 2021. We talk on a regular basis, and I know how deeply committed he is to societal resilience. Before turning the floor over to Premier Chen, I'd like to take a minute of your time to again thank our International Advisory Council, who volunteered to be on our council, and senior fellows who come from all these different countries that we heard today in the second and fourth panel, and guest speakers participating in our forum. We also like to thank our co-founders, having been involved in so many different partnerships now. The Partnership for Health System Sustainability and Resilience Project include partners uh, who are here today, AstraZeneca, Philips, KPMG, and the WHO Foundation, the World Economic Forum, and the London School of Economics. Our donors, our donors and board members who work, make Capri's work possible, and Capri staff for working tirelessly to put it all together, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Just now listening to Lynette Ng from TSMC, how she said that the Taiwanese have a problem of being over-talented and overworking. I have to say, I just like to change that statement to say people who are in Taiwan simply are overcommitted and very passionate. We, as a very small team of 12 or 6 countries, so what I like to edit is not just the Taiwanese. People who come to this island and stay here simply have something out of the ordinary. <laughs> we have a very small staff of 12 people, four uh, in the UK and the United States, uh, but they come from six countries, and they all overwork so much that I cannot follow them. And I thank you, you've probably seen them all over the place here. I thank you for joining us. You are part of us now, either in person or online, and I hope you'll continue to follow our work, help us, volunteer for us, intern for us in any way possible. Now I'd like to invite Prime Minister Chen up to the stage to tell us how we can place resilience at the heart of society, and we look forward to Malcolm's closing remarks afterwards. Thank you again for coming today. Welcome.